Okay, recording started. So welcome uh, back to teaching and learning calls after a little hiatus for back to school uh, for the fall semester. And it's great to see all of you on the call today. And I'm sure some people are still, you know, dealing with back to school, all the activities going on and support and, and things like that for people using Sakai. But glad to see those of you who were able to make the call. And uh, let's see, I guess we'll start with some announcements before we jump into our presentation on Open Collab. So, uh, Field, I'm guessing you might have some announcements. Yeah, I have a fair, fair number of announcements. Um, let's see, first of all, uh, we have the Sakai 11 celebration going on on Twitter, and people can post and then include the hashtag Sakai project, uh, you know, and, and also turn it up to 11. And um, so that's going on, and we have that feed on the Sakai project site under news. You can see the feed coming through of those tweets. Um, feel free to participate uh, however you want. Um, we have 11.2 planned, so 11.1 is already out. That's the latest stable release of Sakai. And then we have 11.2 is planned for October 28th. Um, that's also, we're planning to make that time box, meaning it's whatever we can get in during that time period, which means we'll probably freeze the release uh, around, you know, beginning of October. So we can do a final QA on it and make sure there's no blocker priority bugs. So that's kind of a big uh, milestone for 11.2. Um, what else? Uh, well, a Sakai virtual conference, but I'll let Wilma talk about that because we could use some proposals. So I'll, um, oh, yeah. we'll turn that over to her in a second. And uh, let's see what else is going on here. Um, let me look at my notes. Um, I had a bunch of, oh, here we go. Um, I think that mostly covers it. I mean, we're still making some progress on a, on a Perio farm, um, and hopefully we'll have more. There'll be a, one presentation on that Sakai specific uh, on that for getting new things into, how do you get new features into Sakai, uh, things that you desire into Sakai, and that uh, farm is funding and resource uh, management. And um, we've added a way for people to sign up, like if you want to consult with the group, it's a group of friendly people, and if you want to consult with us, there's a really, really easy sign-up sheet uh, that you can schedule a time with us and just pick which time works for you, and then we'll get that message. And that's on, um, farm.aperio.org under the contacts contact contact us area there. Um, so I think that covers a lot of stuff probably for now. Cool. And like I said, I think we should ask Wilma if she can do a Sakai VC thing. Sure. Um, I can uh, just give a, a quick plug for the virtual conference. It's going to be on uh, Wednesday, November 2nd, and Open Collab is actually one of our sponsors. So thank you, Open Collab, for offering that to help sponsor the event. Um, we are still uh, in the call for proposals, so that's um, actually open until the 16th, which is the end of this week. We may end up extending it a little bit. But um, in either case, I strongly encourage everybody to, you know, put in a proposal. It's a great way to share what you're doing with the community and learn about what other folks are doing around the world with Sakai. Um, so, uh, you know, the call for proposals is, is still open, and um, please get your proposals in. Thanks. Thanks, Wilma. I'm, I'm pretty sure UVA is going to uh, submit one or two. So I need to respond to your email, and I will do that. Oh, that's great. Thanks, Tricia. Uh, no. Uh, I, did, I did forget one announcement. I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, is that OK? Yeah, go ahead. OK. Uh, so um, I've started an Aperio calendar. So we have a Sakai calendar. But I've started an Aperio calendar. And that has like the Aperio farm meeting uh, meeting times on it. And it has what is what else is on it right now? Um, let me take a look. And I want to move the Aperio teaching and learning meeting, since it's not a Sakai specific, but an Aperio, or it's at least intended to be an Aperio level meeting, over to the Aperio calendar. And then I need we need probably places to post where these calendars are so people can find them easily. Um, mm -hmm. So I wanted to mention mention that. Good. It's a good idea. Yeah. Um, yeah. Where to post that? 
Yeah, I can certainly put it in our meeting minutes, but it should be something that is, you know, uh, really right. easy for people to find. Right. Um, uh, so I'll go ahead. Website? Possibly maybe on aperio.org and sakaiproject.org, posting the, you know, those calendars somewhere up there might make sense if I can figure out where. Um, yeah, maybe under the community tab or something. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so let me go yeah. ahead and share share that right now. So. Oh, I just remembered something also. Um, the Cafe Press site, did you mention oh, that, Neil? Yes, yes, I meant to mention that too. Everything's slipping my mind, right. Yeah, go <laughs> ahead. Uh, do you want, you go ahead and mention I'll, that. I'll paste the, uh, the URL in, but it's, um, it's an Aperio store where you can go and buy, you know, Sakai gear or gear for any, any of the uh, Aperio projects. And um, so like t-shirts, hats, bags, all that kind of stuff. And anything purchased through the Cafe Press site, um, there's a royalty that goes back to Aperio. So you're helping to sponsor um, some of the you know, projects under the Aperio umbrella. So let me get that URL for you, paste it in here. And we will, um, we have a, a Sakai section if you're looking for some Sakai gear. Um, I may be adding a couple new t-shirt designs for Sakai 11, so if you wanted to uh, get something specific to the new version, we'll have them up for a limited time. Um, and then uh, closer to the conference, we may actually be adding some conference gear uh, through the Cafe Press site. Um, we'll also be sending out um, conference gear uh, you know, via mail for anybody that registers. So we're doing the same kind of deal where we did last time. Um, first 200 people get a lunch coupon and, and a t-shirt. Um, so uh, we'll be sending those out um, as people register. And we actually haven't opened registration yet, but it will be opening very soon, probably in the next couple of weeks. We'll be opening registration for the conference. Great. Um, and I do want to respond to Adam's question about the schedule for the teaching and learning call. So Adam, I made a mistake. My brain was on tilt and I got confused about the dates in September. <laughs> so just this month we are on the second Tuesday, Wednesday um, in October we are returning to first and third Wednesdays for the call. So sorry my bad and you know way to introduce confusion Tricia but sorry about that. Um, and I will be try to be more careful going forward as I'm looking at calendars. All right, so I think we're ready to dive into our open collab presentation. We have Francois Campbell and Kovic LaRue with us, in addition to El Sabe Boda, and I'm not sure if they have other people sitting in on the call. Um, but we are delighted to welcome them um, and to learn more about Open Collapse. So, Francois, I'm going to turn it over to you first. And um, go ahead. if you don't mind introducing yourself, that would be great. Perfect. Thank you, Tricia. Um, so, I'll just go take you through a bit the structure of the presentation. Um, I'll be presenting a little bit about uh, information about Open Collab to begin with. Um, Corbus will then take you through um, the meat and bones of what the lesson tool integration and um, synthesis tool does. I will then um, just answer a few of the technical questions in the end of the presentation and um, we'll try and then answer some questions there. We'll answer some questions as we go through the presentation as well. Um, a little bit about uh, Elsa B. She's our business development manager. Um, she's involved with all of our new business development, um, sales and marketing. I am Francia Campbell, I'm presenting at the moment. I'm the Teaching, Learning, and Portals Product Lead at OpenCollab. Uh, what that means is I'm involved with new product development and management, um, also with the main focus on the LMS. Um, I'm joined in the office um, by Martelin Ofer, our Managing Director, and by um, Jakob Gilman, one of our lead developers. Um, a little bit of background about Open Colab. It's a South African development company. We were established in 1999. We are a team of 40 plus, um, of which about 36 are developers. Uh, um, we focus on administration systems, learning management systems, reporting solutions, and custom development. Um, we have quite a few clients in very diverse locations. Um, I think it's about four continents now. Um, 
we mainly develop with Java technologies. Um, we take care to work with open source frameworks and tools as much as possible, but we are open to other development as well. Um, we have since May of this year completed 200, up to May of this year, completed 220 products in various fields, um, mainly in e-learning, um, finance, and learner management systems. Um, a few of our current clients, uh, mostly in this instance also um, supported by Sakai, and um, a few blurbs of recent feedback just to And um, yeah, so for any info, in additional information, um, you can please send emails to info at OpenColo. Um, the website is opencolo.co.za, and you can send tweets to OpenColo. I'm going to hand it over to Corbus. Uh, he'll take you through the rest of the presentation. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Corbus LaRue. Um, and I'm joined here by Adele Lotte and Silly Hansen van Vieren. Um, they are both from the IT department here at the Northwest University, and I work with the uh, Center for Teaching and Learning. So we will be um, talking today about, presenting today about um, creating a hybrid online, offline learning environment for, for our students. And I'll give you a bit of um, feedback um, background information, sorry, on, on why we have um, decided to, do, to go this offline route while the rest of the world is trying to go online. Um, and, and then I'll do the scope of what is developed, uh, what we've developed um, for uh, Sakai, and then um, a, a very short demonstration, but it will be a, a slideshow-based demonstration, not a live one. Um, so if we look at um, the background of, of um, the development that we've done, Northwest University, and I'm going to go th through this very quickly, uh, consists of uh, three different campuses that are geographically quite um, far located from one another. Um, we're also a university that try to cater for um, different modes of delivery, distance and contact um, learning. Um, and in, in that um, Within that context, uh, we find quite a lot of challenges within the South African context with our student profile where we have students on the one side of the spectrum that are highly um, technological, um, they, they know how to use, they have access to devices, to the internet, etc. But right on the other side of the spectrum, there are many students that still um, even in rural, rural areas, still doesn't have um, even electricity. And we try to reach all these students, and obviously um, that is a, a huge challenge. For us to get this, um, to get it right, to get education to everybody, um, to get that it, um, epistemological access to, to everybody, uh, we've decided that we're going to eat this elephant step by step, or bite by bite. Um, and as a first step, in order to reach um, more students, not all students yet. So this development is not a, a, f a total solution for our situation, but it's a next step. In order to reach more students, um, we have decided to develop this hybrid learning environment, which I will quickly describe to you. Um, so what we've done, um, um, what we've developed is, um, uh, there's a couple of things that we've developed. Uh, firstly, we started off with the synchronization en um, engine synthesis. That was actually something that was started um, by UNISA, University of South Africa, in, in conjunction with OpenColab. OpenColab um, developed this synchronization engine, and we are now um, developing on top of that further. Um, then, secondly, for the lessons to we developed three uh, three uh, functionalities, uh, export to um, MS Word format um, functionality, uh, import functionality, as well as um, from MS Word, and then as well as a export functionality to an um, um, e-publication format, e-pub3 format. 
So lessons can be exported and imported to and from those, um, those formats. And then lastly, we started, um, uh, we de developed the Ifundi. Ifundi is our local installation of, um, of Sakai. Um, we've developed this Ifundi Move um, app. Um, um, yes. Um, um, the question uh, that Neil asked there, um, are any of these components going to be contributed back? Yes, they, are, uh, they all are, and Francois will, will elaborate on that a bit later in, in this presentation again. Um, so <clears throat> let's quickly have a look at each of these uh, functionalities. And again, this is now from our point of view and from, from our um, uh, uh, yeah, the, from our context, um, but I truly believe that within other contexts, these functionalities might also um, find uh, a, a, a niche uh, as well. So we exported, uh, we decided to export the lessons function uh, lessons uh, to image word format. In our context, it is necessary because of our language issue. Now, the the language, um, the the teaching. Um, language that we use here at the Poch campus, the Poch Sturm campus of the Northwest University is, is Afrikaans mainly, um, and the other two campuses are mainly English, um, and for that reason, all our study material has to be developed in both languages. So in order to easily um, send these, uh, the, the lessons that was developed um, for the people that do the, that, that do our uh, language editing and translation for us. They only work in w word format, so we've decided to e to export the lessons, and then um, the, um, so they can they can then um, do the language editing and, and trans uh, translation. Um, the the process um, uses uh, word style sheets. Uh, we're still working on on that. It's it's working already. The functionality is working, um, but after a um, first semester of using it, um, there are some refinements that we still um, need to do. Um, and again, for the import um, from MS Word, the same uh, the same reason again. Once you've translated or uh, yeah translated your material, you now want to import that to create a new lesson um, in the other language. Um, and uh, it's, it, we, we just wanted to make it much easier for the lecturers so they don't have to copy and paste and, and create from a Word document again. Th they can now just import that um, translated Word document and a new uh, lesson will be, will be created. And I'll, I'll show you um, in the demonstration part uh, quickly. So, um, yes, uh, next slide. The EPUB um, export, so lessons can then be e exported to um, an EPUB format, um, e-publication format. Um, that, that is becoming kind of a standard, it seems to us, in, within um, our, the higher education context. Uh, so we've decided that in order to provide students that they, they do have access to technology, but they don't have um, continuous and and and, uh, and in South African um, context stable internet connection always. Um, we've decided that we wanted to make the resources of which lessons is one um, available to students in offline on their devices, so that they can download once. So they will have to have in internet access at least for a period of time, but then can study or work with the material as much as they like within an environment where they don't have access to the internet. Also within South Africa, internet access is still very expensive um, for our students, especially if we start working with video material, etc. So what we've done with this, with this EPUB is we've, um, all the material, all the um, video clips, PDF documents, um, all the media that you embed within your lessons, will then, when you export it to an EPUB f format, will then be embedded within that, f that one EPUB file. So the student will download that file and will then have access to 
all the material, all the links that, you, uh, that you've made within that um, lesson. Obviously, if you make links to um, things like YouTube videos, etc., those will not download the video, uh, the, the video clips uh, from YouTube. That will only stay or remain a uh, link to that specific um, video, and uh, then obviously the student will have to have internet access for, for that. Currently, we're still working. Uh, yes. Um, like I said, all the, all the, all the media that you, um, that you link to and embed, that is video clips, sound, uh, and also PDF documents, um, they all get embedded within this one file. Currently, we still work on the, the interactivity um, functions that you get in lessons um, to hide subpages, etc. So, um, um, for now, for this first phase, first development that we've done, um, in subpages will unfortunately be displayed within the ebook file, but uh, we've got clever people at Open Colab um, that are working on this issue for us um, at the moment um, as well. So the ebook file that is created um, when you export the lesson is then stored also within the resources tool within Sakai. Um, and then lastly, um, the functionality that kind of brings all this together is the Sakai or Ifundi Move app. Um, so this, I'm going to answer the, the question. Sorry, this is Tricia. And we noticed that your um, audio is breaking up just a little bit. I'm not sure if there's anything you can do about that, but just FYI. And there were a couple of questions before. Um, if you don't mind, uh, one was about accessibility and the in the export. Um, does is the accessibility um, integrity maintained in the export file? Do you know? Um, yes, I, I, I get not here from from our IT people here, so it's, it seems to me that the, that is uh, maintained. Yeah. Great. Um, Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll see. There's not much that I really can do to improve the sound, but um, I'll sit a bit closer to the phone. Maybe that will help. Uh, <laughs> um, I'll, I'll, I'll answer. I try to look at the screen on the side, um, but I'll, I'll, I'll go through the questions quickly afterwards. We are not far from the end of the of, of the presentation, so um, then I'll, I'll, I'll answer the questions in in a batch. So the Ifundi Move app currently for iOS, Android, and Windows desktop available. Um, it synchronizes currently three of the tools of, Sak of Sakai. Um, and and it, this is where the synthesis engine now comes in. So it, it synchronizes the resources. So all the resources that, uh, that the lecturer will upload uh, into the site will then be downloaded. Obviously, the, uh, if you've exported your, your EPUB file, that um, um, uh, if, if you've exported the lessons, that EPUB file will also be downloaded or synchronized. Um, and it's an incremental synchronization. So if you've done it once, you basically have all the files and only the, uh, the changes afterwards will then be, be synchronized. Also, any announcement that is, placed, uh, that is posted by a lecturer will then be pushed to the not notification center of the device that the student use. So it's, it's like a WhatsApp and a SMS notification that you'll get uh, for, your, for the announcement that was posted. So I think that is a great functionality to enhance communication, especially with our distance learning students. And then also the schedule tool, um, uh, or any, any events scheduled on the schedule tool within um, Sakai is get, uh, also get synchronized to the app um, but we've got big ideas about this for, for future development um, in the sense that we would like to make use of uh, calendar functionalities, uh, apps that are available that you can actually um, use those as well. But currently, it is synchronized to the app as, as a list of events that you, that you can view. So if I can quickly run through this. Um, in the background, you can see a lesson that was developed, and on uh, here you can see that there is, um, and I now have to put on my glasses, 
Um, so the last function there is an export to Word um, option that you can click. And if you do that, you will get a Word document that more or less looks like this um, in, in the end. So all sub-pages are kind of concatenated or put together within this Word file. Um, import, just the other way around. So you start off um, within a lesson. Uh, you can click on the import image word to create the lesson function. And then what you will see is a new lesson will be created with that um, information from the image word file. Obviously, that image word file has to uh, be, be formatted in a very specific way and with a specific style sheet. Um, in, so that the, the importer will know when sub-pages has to be created, etc. cetera. Um, but that works fairly well um, already. Um, the EPUB, uh, again, there's our, pub, uh, our lesson um, that was developed. And you can then um, select the export for offline reader functionality. I think it's that one there. It's very small on my screen. Uh, you select that option, and that lesson will be exported. Uh, in, and when the export um, uh, has run through, it will provide you with a link to that EPUB file, which will also be stored within the resources tool. So if you download this or synchronize this with, your, um, with the app, to your device, obviously that EPUB file will also be downloaded. And I'll show you um, how that works in a, in a moment. Um, there's just the, an indication on the left-hand side is the normal lesson that you see online in, uh, in Sakai. On the right-hand side is more or less what it will look like um, on a um, smartphone. Um, <clears throat> and then the, the Funny Move app. Um, obviously, you have to uh, have internet um, access at least once so that you can sign in. You get your list of um, sites that you are registered for. And when you sync that, you will then see uh, the announcement schedule and resources for each of the sites that you are regist registered for um, within the app. Um, <clears throat> if you go to the resources functionality or the resources um, tool, uh, there you will see a list of all the resources that was made available. At this stage, it's still, still just a list that is, that is um, shown. Um, the, 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 uh, the student can then decide whether they want to download each of these, um, of these resources. They can either, either download them resource um, by resource, or they can select the download all um, functionality. So if you click on the download link, you'll see this progress bar that will appear as the, as, um, as the file is downloading. And then if you click on that EPUB file in your resources um, list, um, the, the, the standard procedure will happen. You will be asked which um, app you want to use to open that, that um, e-publication file. We've tested it fairly extensively with this Gitten reader. Um, so you can click there just once or always, and then it will open up within that reader. Uh, and if I just can go on, here you can see um, the screen, the text made available. If you highlight text, you can um, you have some functionalities to make notes and highlight, etc. And um, on the last screen here, you'll see that there was a little video clip that I um, um, embedded within the lesson. Um, that video clip is also then available here. If you click on that um, clip, it will it will play within that EPUB file. And also, um, here's only a link to a PDF document. Um, but you can also embed the, the PDF documents, uh, and, and they will be embedded within this EPUB file um, so that you actually download it only once. And with that, um, the last slide is we, we definitely have future plans. And those future plans, um, we are open for 
um, community involvement. Um, if there are any interest in what we have done here, um, we, we would really like to make this a community, a part of the community as well. Um, there's definitely there's some, some ideas already that we are playing around with. Obviously, we have to make sure that everything works within Sakai 11. That, that open, um, open Colab is currently busy with that. Uh, there are some refinements that we have um, after a semester's use of the app and the, e uh, the, the, download, uh, the, the export functionalities. There are some refinements that we need to make. And then, obviously, uh, we are excited that, uh, you know, to, to think of new uh, developments and new opportunities that this, uh, this allow us to, to follow. So, um, yes, with that, I think it is now back to um, Francois. Hi there. Thank you, Clovis. Um, I'll be taking over and just taking you a little bit um, through some more synthesis detail, um, a little bit of background about it. Um, Synthesis was originally developed for UNISA. Uh, UNISA is a distance learning university in South Africa. Um, they have, at the moment, 400,000 plus students. That's all distance learning students. Um, when we initially uh, developed it for them, um, the idea was that they would develop the Unipool DigiBand. Uh, the DigiBand would be a bracelet with a USB drive connected to it, and um, the drive would host an offline version of Sakai. Um, the UNISA spe specific group uh, license is under ECL2, and it is also open, co open source and available. Um, since then, the Open Colab has really written uh, the Unipool engine. Um, the reason for doing this was to support um, Moodle and Sakai, so multiple LMSs, also to provide a desktop application and a mobile application. Um, I'll go over the licensing in a moment. Um, and since then, um, Northwest has adopted the synthesis engine. Um, they call it Ifundi Move. Um, if they are supporting the desktop and the mobile, the mobile application on their environment. The desktop and mobile environment are branded for Northwest as well and can be branded for any, addition, any other client. Um, I'll also cover the license in a moment. Um, and then just about present a few of the on a few of the questions we've on asked ourselves and the answers to them. Um, we asked ourselves, do we want to sell this as a licensed product? Um, and the answer is no. Um, we'd actually like to share this with the community. Um, the belief around that is that a sharing is caring, and b um, I think we we all just have a, a larger pool and more resources to do good work with. Um, what do we want more implementations? Uh, answer yes um, we are looking at getting more implementations and driving more developments in that direction um, is there a mobile push definitely um, we do believe that mobile as well as desktop is the future um, analytics yes we want to start pushing much further into providing um, universities with analytics on offline use um, for example if a student is offline and they've gone through they've read through a document five or ten times that could be of use to a lecturer to tell them, yes, it's actually valuable. Um, and collaboration, yes, <laughs> definitely yes. It's, on, it's in our name. <laughs> um, and then just to go over the technology stack, um, Synthesis Server, which is a synchronization engine, um, is built on Java, JDK 7 um, and 8. It uses Maven 3 and up, Tomcat 7 and up, and MySQL 5 and up. Um, you'll notice it's pretty much the same stack as Sakai itself, so the server can be run on, on very similar um, hardware. Uh, the mobile application was built with Cordova 6. Um, the front end was built with Angular, JS, and HTML5. On the desktop application side, um, it's built with Java JDK 8 and Java FX. It is packaged to install on Windows, Linux, and Mac. Um, it is not, not currently under AGPL3. We are, the intention is to do so. Um, we just haven't had an opportunity to do so yet. But we will be pushing forward in that direction. Um, how does Synthesis work? Um, synthesis is a synchronization engine which sits between the application, the client application, which would be student facing. A student would either log on to the desktop application or they would download the app onto their phone. 
they would then authenticate against their chosen LMS. Um, in, for example, in the instance of Ifundi, that is Sakai, they will use the Sakai login. Um, they will then register again, go via synthesis. Synthesis will then register them on, um, or will authenticate them against the LMS and then provide them with a list of all of their registered um, modules or sites. From that point on, the supported tools will then start to sync metadata across. Um, how we sync these things across at the moment, um, we are running it on Sakai 10.5. Um, we are using the SOAP, the SOAP APIs. Um, we will be moving towards Sakai 11 um, and moving the synthesis implementation of it to REST. Um, we, will, we have already begun with this work. How, how do we know what the student has? Um, synthesis builds up a list of deltas. So every time the lecturer uploads new content, um, the, the engine will query the LMS, determine there's been a change since a last point in time. It will then create a delta of that file um, or changes. In the case of resources, it will see, okay, this is a new resource. I need to make my clients aware that if they if their last sync was at was at the previous date, um, if they do connect again, that they need to catch up on all of the resources that they've missed or that has not been available to them to this point. This is very, very, very tiny metadata. It's um, basically just JSON files telling them the version, the name, um, and when it was uploaded. It's not the actual file itself. Um, we do this in order for the synchronization to be um, as light as possible. Um, from that point, um, when the user authenticates and tries to synchronize, they will then pull down this, this Delta file. This Delta file will then inform the student um, that they have content waiting to be downloaded. Uh, Corbus illustrated it earlier, where you have the download all or the download specific item. Um, from that point, the student then decides when and what they want to download. Uh, we feel this is quite powerful because it puts the choice back in their hand. Um, and from that point, if they decide to download, it then goes via um, synthesis to the LMS, downloads the content, and the content is then stored from that point forward on the client device. Um, they then don't have to access, they can go offline and access it from there. Um, so then this is just an example of an unbranded mobile application. Um, the student signs in. Once they sign in, they'll be presented with the module name um, and the three tools that are available to them. Um, announcements and schedules will automatically download because that is text content. The resources will show as a red cloud just to indicate that there is content waiting to be downloaded. Um, again, just a rehash of what um, Corpus demonstrated earlier. Um, you will get the content, the name of the file, the file type, and the file size you won't actually have the, uh, the binary content available to you yet. Um, then from that point on, you can decide if you want to individually download them or download all. Uh, then the next question is where to next? Um, what we would like to do is encapsulate synthesis with a broader mobile solution, specifically post Sakai 11 release. Um, a lot of, there were a lot of questions up in the air about what Sakai would, what problems Sakai would answer. Um, and we are doing some soul searching in terms of what we can deliver that Sakai 11 doesn't. Um, we'll be moving forward with that. Um, the, the next agenda would then be to work with interested parties to incorporate the test and quizzes tool in a more complete offline solution. Now, this is a behemoth um, test and quizzes. It's, it's, it's a massive tool and it's a massive undertaking. Um, it's not something that I believe we could do on our own quite easily. It would, it, we really do need interested parties. Yeah, um, we need to then either do it as uh, eating the elephant, as they say, piece by piece. Um, additional goals are also to plug into additional content repositories, such as Aperos OAE. Um, we'd also like to speed up development um, with the community's help. Okay. Um, yeah, I agree with Anil, it is scary. <laughs> <laughs> um, so on to Unipool, uh, it's under ECL2. Uh, the synthesis engine itself is under Fero General Public License version 3. It's available on GitHub, um, the following location. Uh, we'll be happy to provide um, anyone with the link to it as well. It is completely open, so go ahead and, and grab it. 
Um, our goal really is, and why we went with AGPL3, was just to stimulate collaboration and also to ensure that all enhancements going forward stay open source. Um, it's very important to us. Again, it's in the name, Open Collab. <laughs> so, yeah, um, so any questions? I think I'll go through them on the right here and see if there's any that we've skipped um, and try and address them. Um, so, Laura asked any instructor, okay, no, that is, Open Collab doesn't have instructors um, or instructional designers. Uh, we, we rely heavily on Northwest and our other clients to, to fill that gap. Uh, Terry asks, will the import-export function maintain the integrity of heading styles for accessibility? Uh, at the moment, when you import, it takes the heading styles, and that's what it used to create, um, the sub-pages or the actual pages. So to answer the question, kind of. Um, we're using the heading one, heading two, in order to build our, our document structure for lessons. But um, there is a setting in the Sakai properties where it can be set to also keep that um, heading, also put in a heading two header on the sub page. So there are ways and means of making sure that that does stay there. It's not 100%. It is something that uh, Corbus highlighted earlier. It's one of the avenues we're working on. Okay, um, then scrolling further. Does it mean the content and lessons, which is in resources, will be available offline? Uh, Greg, yes. That will, whatever in resources is available to be downloaded via the synthesis engine. Um, if you go further down. Okay, Charles Bristow asks, if a change is made in the original lessons page in Sakai, I presume you would need to recreate the EPUB export. This is correct. Um, as as and when there are changes, you'll need to then just export again to EPUB. Um, what we we don't recommend doing it too often because um, the users will then download it. But again, the user has the option to download it. So if you do create um, accidentally create the EPUB and make another change, you can send out an announcement for your site, um, which will then go through as a um, as a notification just telling them, look, don't download this one, you can download the other one. Or I'm going to generate a new one in a few moments. Um, and I'll go down the list a little bit further. Um, I'm sure just to get uh, come in there, so <clears throat> that actually has too much to do with, the, with your planning, with your instructional design kind of, um, uh, to, to make sure that, you know, you, you don't have to re- Export the the EPUB file um, too frequently, in, in, so that you you don't end up with a version control problem. Because unfortunately, once you've uploaded or the student downloaded that EPUB file onto his or her device, it, it's out there. You, you you can't retract it. So yeah, so there's definitely some planning to do to work around that issue from from the lecturer side. Agree 100%. Um, Neil asks, is that the Semigo testing courses? Um, yes, it is, but again, it's not something we want to trade into lightly. Um, it's something where we'll need quite a, quite a few par quite a few partners um, with very very specific commitment to to start in that process. And it is something that we'll start piecemeal, um, piece by piece. It won't be all one big bang as well. Um, but yeah, we are going into it with our eyes open. If if there is interest, um, that's, I think, where we'd want to go. Um, if I go down the list further, there's no further questions. Um, and this is my second one. about the security? How would you ensure test security? Yeah, again, test security is a big, is a big reason why we haven't delved into it. Mm -hmm. um, there, are, there are certain types of, of tests which can be done offline, which you're not too, too concerned about, but it definitely wouldn't be your semester or your end of quarter exams. Um, it would be more like your continuous assessment sort of things um, for now. At, it, it, at this stage, it's, it's very much still in the planning phase and the spitballing phase, if I can call it like that. Um, but we are looking for for definite interest and for definite uh, collaboration on that. Um, then I think that is it from our side. Um, again, if you want to send any questions, um, info at Open Collab, uh, the website, or the, the Twitter handle. Else we, um, I think we'll also put the email address into the chat 
so that anyone wants to get in contact with her can do so. And then Corbus, let me go back to Corbus Leroux. Um, I'm sure Elf will also put his email address and contact details below. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Um, I, hope, I hope you were able to shed some light and to share something with you. Uh, this has been really great. And what this is so, so cool what you guys are doing. And um, thank you so much for agreeing to talk to us today and share all of this wonderful stuff with us. It's really exciting. And um, uh, we can't wait to, you know, collaborate and um, and get a, get access to all of this in the Sakai community and the Aperio community. Really, really cool. Thank you so much again. Um, uh, so, sorry, one, yeah. one yeah, last point you. was um, the lesson builder tool. Um, we, I think Northwest as well, wants to really wants to commit it back to the community. Um, so we will be starting that conversation as well. Um, We'd obviously like to get it to uh, Sakai 11 state ready state and then start the discussion. Uh, that's it from me. Yeah, that's fantastic. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you for the opportunity as well from Northway's side. Yes, thank you, Kobus, so much. Really enjoyed it. Um, so, folks, we uh, have. Our next meetings are in October, October 5th, which is the first Wednesday, and October 19th, which is the third Wednesday. I think I've got that right. And uh, Louisa has been helping me touch base with some of the Twistia, um, sorry, the Atlas. It used to be Twistia, now it's Atlas, presenters from the Aperio Conference um, back in May. And I need to reach out to them and get them scheduled. So, uh, oh yes, please. Alsabe, please join these calls. Um, you can join the list. Uh, maybe, uh, Neil, can you put in information in the chat on how they can join one of the lists? So they get notices when these are scheduled? Great. Love to have you join us. Thank you. Thank you, Neil. Uh, so I will send out more information about those topics as soon as I get them scheduled. Does anybody else have any other uh, announcements or uh, notices to mention before we adjourn? Okay, so I will just, as a reminder, because there is such a, a close deadline to encourage folks to submit proposals for the Sakai Virtual Conference, they're supposed to be done uh, due this Friday, and maybe the, there will be an extension. I kind of hope so. <laughs> but um, anyway, uh, as soon as possible. And um, we look forward to seeing everyone again on October 5th, and we'll be sending out uh, reminders about that. So guess what? We ended early. Thank you. Yes, thanks, everybody, especially our presenters. Thanks a lot. <laughs>